Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the mailbox for the 2nd of June 2011. My name is Total Biscuit, bringing you your daily podcast of community interaction, emails, discussions, and general nonsense. The game in the background is Beat Hazard. If you are really susceptible to bright flashing lights, Please do not watch this video. I cannot be held responsible. It shouldn't give you a seizure because it is at 30 FPS, which, as I recall, is not enough to cause any kind of seizure-like behavior, but still, you have been warned. You can email mailbox at cynicalbrit.com with your topics for future shows. The first email comes in from Blue Dude that says, Hi, TV. I remember someone in a previous mailbox saying something along the lines of, Everyone knows that PC is superior in controls and graphics to consoles. Now, I'm not trying to call that person out. I'm simply using them as an example. I personally find I prefer to use my PS3 pad for gaming than a keyboard. I love the way the game controller fits perfectly into my grasp as opposed to the keyboard. I also prefer to look at spectacular games on my slightly larger TV as opposed to my computer screen. However, I'm in no way saying that these views are the correct views because I know that it's just my opinion and other people have theirs. Personally, I don't think any of the platforms are particularly better than the rest. It's all a matter of opinion. My problem is the vast number of PC gamers who honestly believe that they are the gaming elite and the console gamers are children and bad gamers. At first, I pretty much went with this. From what I'd heard from Reddit and other places, everyone who played on PC was mature and skilled compared to the more noobish console owners. However, after I got a Steam account and played some PC games, I realized that really that isn't true one little bit, and that the ratio of pro gamers to children was hardly any different to that of the PS3. The point that I'm getting at is I'm sick of PC gamers looking down their noses at the people that prefer to play on consoles. It's definitely creating a rift in the community that could be so much better than this. So, what are your opinions? Not on the platform argument, but on the general negative view of PC gamers towards console gamers. I know that you are primarily a PC gamer, so your opinion might be slightly biased, but I also know that you are a fair person, so I'm interested in seeing what your views are on the matter. I wouldn't exactly call me a fair person, I'm completely mean and unreasonable, according to some people, but hey, there you go. Well, the thing is, I own all of the current generation consoles, all of the current generation handhelds, a few handhelds that you haven't heard of, and also a gaming PC. Well, in fact, two of them, but whatever. So... I play games on a lot of different platforms. I primarily play my games on PC, but games that I cannot get on PC, I will naturally play on a console. LA Noire is a prime example. No More Heroes, Heroes Paradise is another example of something I've been playing recently. And of course, the one and only Mortal Kombat. The thing about PCs is that in theory, they are superior in every way to a console, assuming they're high enough spec. For instance, your controller argument. Well, you can use a PS3 pad with a PC. You can use a 360 pad with a PC. You can use any kind of controller with a PC. You can use a Kinect with a PC if you like doesn't really matter and as a direct result of that i have to sort of disregard that argument i also have to disregard the idea of well i like playing games on my television yeah, again you can do that from a pc if it's a modern television it takes hdmi even if it's a slightly older television it probably still takes vga you can use it as a monitor you can use it to play any kind of game that said the main crux of your argument was the whole superiority thing and yes it is absolutely bogus i think we've seen many, many examples of the fact that PC gamers are just as immature, if not more so, in many cases. I mean, for example, and yes, I'm stirring the hornet's nest here, and quite frankly, I'm bloody well justified in doing so, the Minecraft fans, or the Terraria fans, and I'm not talking about the ones on my channel, I'm talking about the general community, are totally insufferable. <laughs> They're really, really, really bad. God, they are. I mean, you just need to see the spam on the Yogscast channel just to prove that. You've got a lot of very, very young people, either that or hideously immature people, that play those kind of games. And they're not the only games. I'm not just saying that, hey, Minecraft and Terraria foster a really bad attitude in the community. There are a ton of games like that, and a ton of attitudes that are very, very similar. Yes, there is no big difference between the community's level of intelligence or maturity. It just isn't the case. I know an awful lot of people, and I I've seen many, many examples of consoles being used by working professionals who just want to come home and play a few games and have it nice and easy, and there's an equal number of kids there as there are to PCs, and honestly, I just throw the argument that one crowd is better than the other completely out of the window. They're all equally bad. <laughs> there you go, I'm going to be an equal opportunities hater right here. Seems entirely reasonable. So, yeah, you can throw that one out of the window. I think that the argument that games are more complex on PC does have some merit. That said, you are looking at very specific examples. I mean, for instance, Minecraft is not a complex game. It's true, it's not. It's just a game that has very little going for it in terms of in-game help or tutorials. 
There is a game called Fortress Craft that's being made. In fact, I believe it's already out on Xbox Live Arcade. It's a pretty damn similar game. You can do it on a console. It's not a problem. And there are complex games on consoles as well. So I suppose the point to be made is that, yes, the PC is the superior platform, but owning one does not make you a superior gamer. More often than not, it just makes you an ass. This one comes in from Carl. It says, I had a question regarding the metagame that has become so prevalent in online gaming these days. When I used to play WoW in Classic, I used to play a shaman, a DPS shaman for that matter, which was often shunned by the community because of the fact that gear for a DPS shaman was far and few. I assume you mean few and far between, but whatever. However, given my situation, my guild would still add me to groups and raids, getting to see things like Zolgro and AQ20 because they weren't too afraid to take risks, and we got quite far in both situations. Today in WoW and almost every other possible game, it seems like I can't be into the game without looking up the best possible build on the forums or be excluded from anything. In games like League of Legends, I play uncommon characters like Gragas and Trundle, getting quite a bit of hatred for my choice of character selection. Even in small fun console games like Super Smash Bros. or Mario Kart, I get people telling me that my choice is wrong and I'm not following the meta game. I just wanted to hear your thoughts on the matter, as meta gaming has its place and those people who want to maximize are welcome to do so. But it has become so mainstream now that almost every game has a meta game and the community strictly follows that and outcasts those of us who don't want to take advantage of the diversity of classes, characters, stats, and other things that appear in games. It's actually led me down a path of hatred for online gaming, avoiding social interaction in games because I don't care to hear if my choice is right or wrong, as I just want to enjoy the game for myself and discover what works and what does not. Yeah, metagaming is one of the most insufferably annoying things in the world, and the fact that it gets applied to all sorts of different games is ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> the Super Smash Brothers and Mario Kart metagame? Are you serious? I mean, what are you, seven years old? I play competitive Smash Brothers. <laughs> You're an idiot! For God's sake, I play competitive Smash Brothers, a game that is not designed to be played competitively to the point where they have to outlaw so many characters, levels, and put in so many contrived arbitrary rules just to make it fair and balanced. The more exceptions there are to a rule, the worse the rule is. Therein lies the problem. If you're having to make all of these changes, then your game sucks competitively. It really, really is awful. And the vast majority of games cannot be played competitively because they were never designed to be. I think this whole competitive scene thing is something that's arisen perhaps over the past five years or so. Admittedly, that kind of behavior did used to be around in arcades and stuff, but I think it's got really prevalent and, as he said, very, very mainstream. It's awful. It really, really is. It's insufferable. I can't post a video of a game without people criticizing my skill level of it. It's like, for God's sake, I don't play this game for 60 or 70 hours. I don't practice to be really, really good at it. I just occasionally will play it. I mean, for example, what's going on in the background? Beat Hazard. I've played it for an hour total since I picked it up. So, it's like, oh my God, you, you, you're not amazing at Beat Hazard. Oh my God, you're not playing at the highest, craziest difficulty level that you haven't even unlocked yet. Come off it! Who the hell cares? The Beat Hazard metagame? Like the hell that matters. It really, really does not. I wish people were not defined by their accomplishments in irrelevant video games that people will not care about in a year's time. I really, really wish that were the case. Hell, it even applies to WoW to some degree. Back in vanilla, we actually had a bear tanking in Molten Core, which at the time was unfrickin' heard of. But we had a bear tanking in Molten Core. And there you go. And people weren't really upset about that, and we actually accepted it. Admittedly, I've been a part of the min-maxing crowd before when I was doing the hardcore raiding. But in a stats-heavy game like WoW, I suppose it's more acceptable. In things like Mario Kart... God, who the hell cares? There's also a lot of tear whoring, as I like to call it, and this is particularly prevalent in Heroes of New Earth, Dota, and League of Legends. LoL's pretty bad about that. People just turn around and say, oh, it's a low-tier hero, you shouldn't be playing. It's like, you don't even understand how the tier system works. The tier system is designed around competitive, properly picked teams, yeah? In a competitive environment when playing at the highest possible level. They do not apply to you, who is languishing in ELO hell because you're too goddamn terrible to get anywhere. Yeah, that stuff can go to hell, quite frankly. Play a game that you enjoy in a way that you enjoy, and unless you are somehow impeding the other people's enjoyment of the game by making your unorthodox choices, then just freaking do it. Don't care what anybody else thinks of you, and for God's sake, stop condemning people over what they choose to do in a video game that they bought. 
As said before, it does not matter unless you are negatively affecting the play experience of your teammates. That is the only time when adhering to the metagame should actually matter. Otherwise, do whatever the hell you please. This one comes in from Liam that says, Hey TB, after watching your mailbox for the 1st of June, I noticed a similar conflict of agreements with my friends about the graphics of newer games that are being released. For example, I play Minecraft and Terraria. I think that the graphics for both of these games combined with the sheer simplicity of getting resources and making things is pure genius. However, many of my friends believe that the low graphical quality means these games aren't worth buying and seem to use it as the only valid argument as to why they're bad. Another example which astounded me at the time was Borderlands. After playing Borderlands with my friends for a while, I asked them what their impressions of the game were. My response is, the game is awesome, too bad the graphics are terrible. Now, I don't know if you've seen the graphics of Borderlands, but they are designed to be cartoony. In my opinion, good graphics are the graphics that the designers set out to accomplish, which is why I think that games like Minecraft, Terraria, and Borderlands have good graphics. What is your opinion on this, and how can I help my friends see the point of view? Generally speaking, the kind of people, and bear in mind, I have to assume that these people are actually children or teenagers, those kind of people can't be convinced by anything. Hell, this kind of attitude persists through to adulthood, sadly. You just need to go on Reddit and have a look at the people whining that Duke Nukem Forever apparently looks terrible graphically. No, it doesn't. It's not the most amazing game in the world, graphics-wise, as far as I can tell, but it's certainly not terrible. Good God, have you never seen what terrible actually is? Go have a look at a game like Big Rigs Over the Road Racing. That is terrible. And then you can look at Duke Nukem and say, well, actually, this accomplishes what it sets out to do. Yes, it is not the most high-fidelity game on the planet. It is no Crisis 2, but it is still a really good-looking game. The whole Borderlands thing, and actually the Minecraft and Terraria, do very well to illustrate the point that most people cannot under any circumstances, separate the idea of objective fact and subjective opinion. It is okay to not like Borderlands graphic style. It is not okay to say, these graphics are terrible. It's the same as it being okay to not like a certain game. But it's not okay to say, this game is terrible. No, because what you're trying to do there is express a fact. You're saying that this, this is bad. You're not saying, well, in my opinion, I don't really like this game, or... In my opinion, this game is subpar for these reasons. No, you're actually just coming out and saying, this game is terrible. And that is incredibly arrogant. It really, really is. It's like, I'm sorry, you can't bend the universe to your will simply through your own personal opinion. So you don't like the game. Big deal. A bunch of other people do. It got high reviews or whatever. And why does your opinion matter? Come on. I mean, really, why would I care what you like? For instance, I had somebody today commenting on my Facebook saying, oh, DDO is terrible or DDO sucks. Like, why do I care about your opinion about this game? I know why I like it. I can give you a big list of reasons and a running commentary. I could talk for an hour about why I like DDO nonstop. So why does your opinion that it's bad matter? And graphics are by far the silliest thing. You can have a look at graphics and you could say, well... Okay, the reasons that I think the graphics in this game are subpar consist of the texture quality here and here, the fact that there are geometry errors, the models aren't particularly good, the facial animation is subpar relative to other games of this type and on this budget and so forth. And that's fine, but you can't just turn around and say Borderlands has terrible graphics because under no possible objective criteria does Borderlands have terrible graphics? It's as simple as that. This one comes in from Gaunt and says, You've said that you're tired of the mainstream push button MMO and that it's outdated. I'm wondering what your opinion is about another aspect, the Trinity, tank, healer, and DPS, that's often in most MMOs these days. The lack of healers and tanks are often a problem that's solved in various ways like Call to Arms in WoW, or that the classes can do most roles as in Rift and Star Wars The Old Republic, or all the roles like in Guild Wars 2. As a player that normally plays as a healer and doesn't like to play as a DPS, that makes me a fan of the Trinity and I would miss it if it disappeared. Should a new MMO have the Trinity or is it something that should be phased out or softened up so you aren't dependent on your group having certain roles to complete raid, flashpoint instances and all that good stuff? and making characters more or less into hybrids. What is your view about the Trinity and its place in MMOs? Well, personally, I would like to see it gone because we've seen the results of the Trinity within World of Warcraft and the fact that Call to Arms is nothing but a band-aid and apparently has completely failed from what I've been told. You've got people going into there to go and tank in PvP gear just because they want extra stuff and end up wiping the group repeatedly. 
So it, it just doesn't work. It's a band-aid. And I think that what Blizzard needs to address is the fact that tanking is evidently not attractive to the vast majority of people. If it was, we wouldn't have these issues. So there's obviously something going wrong there. Guild Wars 2 is trying to get rid of it entirely. I don't know how well that's going to work, but I'm certainly interested in finding out. I should point out, because people keep asking me, yes, I will be playing Guild Wars 2, and yes, I will be doing my utmost to get into the beta and cover it in great detail, because as far as I can tell, Guild Wars 2 is going to be a fantastic game from everything I've heard up until this point. I don't want to prejudge it, but I like their design philosophy an awful lot, and it seems like the kind of game I could really get into. Well, the original Guild Wars was pretty entertaining. I just didn't really feel like another hotkey game. It had some pretty cool elements to it. The Trinity's tricky though, isn't it? Because you've kind of got to contrive ways for the Trinity to disappear, or you've got to give everyone a way of tanking, which often doesn't really make a lot of sense. But it's like, ah, oh, you are a mage and you are tanking. How? <laughs> so, you know, we're just going to put in the magical doohickey, which will allow you to tank. I don't know. It just works. So I don't think the Trinity is going to disappear just yet because it is a fairly good model. Although I think that Rift probably does it better since you can sort of swap around your roles quite nicely. I think that role swapping is going to be the thing to go for. It's already happened in certain games and I would expect to see it an awful lot more going into future MMOs. I think the days of tightly defined classes are pretty much over to the point where hell even WoW isn't all that tightly defined anymore. Blizzard have already made some very serious efforts to diversify the hybrid classes so they can cover pretty much any role. I would not be just surprised at all to see Shaman getting tanking abilities, and I mean proper tanking abilities, back very, very soon indeed. And that's probably one way to alleviate some of the problems. Hell, they used to tank back in vanilla. I don't see why they can't do so now if they were given the appropriate talents to do it. But I think that it's on its way out, and I personally will not be sad to see it go. It's had its time. It made sense, certainly six years ago, doesn't really make so much sense anymore. The point of gaming in general is to have the genres evolve and to also have the games in question build upon the lessons of previous titles. And I think that getting rid of the trinity of healer, tank, and DPS is probably a good step to take as long as you design your game with the mechanics in mind and you don't completely screw it up. Okay, folks, that's me done for the day. Thank you very much for watching the mailbox. Of course, there will be one more mailbox before the weekend. Feel free to email in mailbox at cynicalbrit.com. That is mailbox at cynicalbrit.com. With your questions, any gaming stuff is welcome, and I will see you next time.